Right, I think we're clean. Um, yeah, so you may wonder what you're doing here in my box room. Well, today I had planned to make a video giving you a bit of a, a run through on how I personally set up my uh, mountain bike, my enduro bike, my giant rain, and all the bits and pieces that I do to make my life easier. But uh, I went riding all day today and I'm just back and it is about um, 7 o'clock and I said I was going to put this video out tomorrow so I've just ordered a pizza and I'm going to start tidying up the box room because uh, as you can see I live in a really small flat. I live in just this one room. Uh, no, not really. Uh, I have a one bedroom flat and I'm going to clean up this room so we can do this video and I can take you through it but also I haven't even washed my bike since the last ride so I'm gonna have to give it a dry clean as well so um yeah we're just gonna I'm gonna tidy the room stop for a bit of dinner and uh yeah then we'll get to the video so see you in a sec so we just gave the room a quick tidy up and now I need to give the, the bike a bit of a dry clean um I try not to wash my bikes if they don't need to be washed with a hose just to like keep them running good but um, I think for the purpose of this video it's better that you don't think I'm a slob and I have a clean bike so we got it cleaned up. As you can see here we have what is commonly known as a dirty bike. Nice and dirty. So we're just gonna clean all this off. I'm actually gonna do a dry clean. Um, just maybe a little um, I don't know what the word is. What do you call it? Uh, unorthodox, but uh, I live in a tiny flat and I left my washer in the street uh, and somebody stole it. So, that's what you gotta do now. Some people, some people probably think this is quite an offensive way to clean your bike and it maybe does scratch it but having a nice brush, nice soft brush like this Juice Loops one um, makes me feel a little bit better about it um, doesn't seem to scratch it though so we're just kind of trying to push off the dried dirt um, but yeah sorry if this offends you but this is how we just gotta make it work Okay, warm in here so we've just got the worst of it off now, certainly all the um, all the dry stuff. So, and by dry stuff I mean all the clumps. So let's um, let's get to the next bit. I usually take the towel to it and just kind of like wipe it down, and then I use um, some JL sixty nine, which I have up here. Um, this is um, basically. Uh, WD-40 or GT-85, similar similar product, but this is real good for cleaning your bike uh, as well. So I use this just to get the sort of dirt off before I go over with the gloss uh, frame finisher afterwards. So we're just going to get the rest of it cleaned up and go from there. Coming up shiny. Look at it, looking much better. Much better already. Now it's time for the bit that makes your bike look sparkly. Keeps the mud off it a little bit more than normal. And makes it smell great. It's called Juice Lube's deodorant. It's actually frame juice. But I'm just going to pop a bit of this on. Give it a bit of a shine so that when you're watching the rest of this video, you have a sparkly bike to look at uh, in between all the muddy bits that I have, I have left because I'm inside, it's too much work. So we're just gonna put a bit of this on. So I know some of you are also gonna have noticed I haven't hoovered yet. So before, before I do the frame piece on it, I'm gonna hoover because uh, the floor doesn't stay like this. And that'll be my pizza. Excellent, let's go get the pizza.
Hey, come on, I'm eating. Stop watching. Oh, so pizza's over. I'm a little tired now, though, and that's definitely kind of tired me out now. But we're gonna press on with the video. We're gonna we're gonna get this finished. So I'm actually gonna Hoover now. So let's get this room cleaned up, and we will get the bike finished, and then we will go over the bike. So sorry it's taking so long. That'll do for now. Let's get it cleaned up. All right, I think that'll do. So we're gonna jump in and we're gonna talk about how I set up my enduro bike. So uh, this is my Giant Rain Advanced Pro 1. This is a bike that I'd never rode before until this year. And I've been absolutely stoked on it. It has really, really done the job for me this year. And it took me a little bit of time to get used to it as you would with any new bike. And I've learned a few things about setting this up and I also want to share with you a few things about how I've set it up, just in general. And you can probably learn a few things from this and hopefully uh, set a few things up on your bike. This is not really like bike set up, more just like little things that make my life easier. Uh, so we're just going to go through all those things. And I should stop recapping every sentence because that's, that's kind of annoying. So let's go. So I've kind of moved here so I can sit down and talk about all the things that I want to talk about today. So um, I've slightly shown how you can <laughs> get all your bike stuff done in a tiny little box room if you have one, uh, how to do a really sketchy dry cleaning your bike. But uh, the whole point in this video was really to talk about um, the things I've learned about my bike this year and the little handy little tips and tricks that you can easily implement uh, for yourself just to make life a bit easier for you. So the first thing uh, I want to talk about is this year um, It was a first year ride been riding the giant uh, as I said earlier and The giant is very different to the previous bike that I rode um, Because it doesn't really have any brake jack when you uh, pull the back brake so what that means is is when uh, on a lot of bikes, the suspension design, when you pull the back brake, it essentially squats down. The suspension squats down, which is like, you know, quite a useful feature in some ways because it lowers your center of gravity and like helps with you slowing down. But it's a negative because also it means your suspension isn't active under braking. Whereas the Giant is the other way around and um, it is active under braking, but because it doesn't squat down, your weight is then thrown forwards and uh, it sort of adds the extra fork dive. So that for me at the start of the year was like pretty tricky to get used to, um, but something that um, over time I've found is like a really positive thing and actually like seems to suit my riding quite well. Um, but really the thing I learned was to not worry about that because both designs have their merit with that. And really, like, in terms of, like, that, you can work around it and it's not going to be too much trouble because, you know, one will be slightly better in one area and the other will be a bit better in, in the other. So, um, that's, like, not been an issue, which was something that I found um, just quite difficult coming off a completely different bike design, but it's actually been totally fine. It became a non-issue, basically. Um... So in terms of like setup, I didn't actually even do anything to get around that. Um, I may, I I maybe put a bit more air in the forks than I normally would do, um, and or, or sorry, not air in the forks, a little bit more low speed compression just to counteract that effect. But um, I can't really remember anymore. It's been so long since I got over that problem or sort of issue I was I was, I was working through there. Um, so. In terms of like parts on the bike that I've, that I use that just really are there to make my life easier or um, certainly have made my life easier since we started using them. Uh, the first thing is like the bike yoke 
uh, revive seat post. Um, this is like, I can't go on about how nice a seat post this is to use, even though it's just a seat post, but the lever feel uh, for a mechanical post is like really nice. It's super smooth. Um, but one of the best bits about it is it's got the, um, the revive lever, um, which also is just a four mil Allen key. Um, as you'll see, I've demonstrated here with the four mil Allen key. And that allows you to basically, uh, if your seat gets the sort of like squidginess that a lot of the dropper posts do get, and that's just part of the design of the way that they work, you can use this four mil Allen key, turn the revive uh, bolt lever bit and get rid of the squidgy thing just by cycling the post down. Um, which is like really good because if I'm out in a race or just even on a ride and you accidentally pull the seat up whilst you're, um, you know, just going over a fence or whatever, then you can, and that gets the squidgy thing going, you can just get rid of it because you have the, you know, your post is able to do that. Whereas if you've got like a, um, a different type of post that doesn't have that, then you're just stuck with a squidgy post until you can uh, service that internally. So I love that feature about the bike yoke seat post. Um, I've used that a bunch of times this year because I'm super careless when uh, using my, like pulling the bike over the fences and stuff or whatever. So uh, that's been a really, really nice feature. Um, another thing, which is kind of a general part, but this year, like obviously getting hold of bike parts has been really difficult and um, I think a lot of people would assume that um, we run the top of the line stuff and like obviously for some parts uh, we do but in terms of like the way stuff has got to now and like the price of spares um, I'm perfectly happily just running sort of GX or DR drivetrain and then similarly this year we've got SLX brakes um, which have been really good like super impressed um, you know they've all this stuff's performed like perfectly at the EWS level absolutely no problems there obviously like the the electric gears or like XTR is like super nice but at the end of the day you don't you don't need it like you know like this stuff's absolutely fine and, and it's a little bit heavier but I think like I don't care about that weight generally I mean you, you don't notice it to be honest I mean the, the stuff at that level GX or DR like it's it's light enough, you know, and it's certainly, you know, if you're struggling for fitness, you're better off getting fitter rather than like 200 grams because getting fitter is going to be way more beneficial than just trying to lose 200 grams in a cassette. So yeah, like basically like for me, just using some of the cheaper parts is just, it's just the way to go. You don't need to run the top spec everything all the time, especially because you know, when you damage a part, you know, you don't need to buy, or you, you never had to buy it, but you don't, there's no pressure to buy the, the expensive one again, um, really, so, uh, that's just like a little insight into why uh, we're running some more budget parts on the bikes um, at the moment. Um, if I was to like, uh, choose the part to upgrade, it's kind of boring, but I would choose the cassette, because you can save it, that's the biggest weight saving place. Um, you know, I don't think, yeah, just the SLX brakes for me have been absolutely perfect going up to Saint. I'm sure they are more powerful, but I haven't ever felt the SLX lacking at all. So I'm good with that. So the other thing that's like super important, and especially if you're living in the UK, is to have a rock solid mudguard. And Mudhugger this year have kindly supported us and... I've never used a mud hugger. That's that was about to be a lie. I have used a mud hugger for the last couple of years, um, but I didn't uh, just last year because we ran forks that the mud hugger wasn't compatible with. Um, but the new mud hugger that bolts on to our Fox thirty eights or our Fox thirty sixes and all the Rockshox forks um, that have the bolt on mounts. Drunk guy outside. Um, <laughs> The new rock, the new uh, mud hugger uh, Evo, the bolt on one, has been like absolutely amazing and an absolute game changer when it comes to uh, making sure that we don't get too much mud in our eyes or 
uh, too much mud in their goggles or glasses. So that's something that like if you don't have a mud guard, you need to get a mud guard for sure. And I'll drop a link in the bio for um, this stuff as well, so you can find it. Um, but the 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 mud hugger uh, bolt on one, it just makes life super easy because it's just bolted on there. You've not got any ugly zip ties um, or like like. You know they're not rubbing the forks either so it helps with the resale value of your forks if you plan to sell them at any point so that's been really useful for me is those um is the mud hugger evo uh, mud guard this year and um, i don't think i have it on the longest length it's just the the mid the mid size one which has been perfect i haven't uh, felt i needed anymore but um haven't it's actually been quite a dry summer so it's not been too bad not noticed it so much so we'll see what happens this winter and I'll keep you posted, we shall see. So, let's have a look at my list for the other things I need to talk about. Turns out if you shake your your iPhone, it wants you to undo some typing. So, I have discovered that during this process. Oh, there it goes again. So like one of the other uh, like channel sponsors, uh, sponsors of us is Granite Design Tools. Um, we've actually used their parts for years. Um, they make nice little tools um that like go on your bike i would have to say that like uh just tools that you can put on your bike wherever they are uh ones that are designed for that and uh, there's other brands out there is like the way to go to make sure that you have uh you know all the tools with you now the the, the thing is is it's not about like how good the tools are or how like light they are it's the fact that I can never forget them because they're always on my bike because I've even done a race day before in the past where I like forgot to take allen keys with me and you would think I would remember but I've forgotten and it's really annoying whereas like always having my allen keys in the top tube is like just super useful and then in each bar end I have a tool as well so on one side I've got um the little tire uh, repair tool, um, you know, with some little tire, um, the rubber inserts as well. And on the other side, I've got a chain tool. And to be honest, I, I don't remember the last time I used a chain tool trail side, but it'll be useful when I need to use it. That's for sure. Um, and then uh, Granite also do, and I just use this. This is the only way, the only tool I have to do this particular thing. And I have it on my bike the whole time as their tire levers. Also, um, uh, I have a chain breaker on them, which is like so useful because if you've uh, snapped your chain or you've like wrecked your mech or something and you need to um, break your chain, you just got that nice little chain breaker tool. Instead of having to wreck your chain by putting a whole uh, pin out with a chain tool, you got the chain breaker, which is super useful. So. Um, those are just like um, some of the things I've got. Oh, I've also got the pump as well attached to my bike. Um, I just have this like tiny little pump and every time I use it, I'm always a bit annoyed I don't carry a bigger pump. But I know from experience when I have had a bigger pump, I just have like couldn't be bothered to bring it. And I've just like been like, oh, someone else will have a pump. Um, whereas this one just means I always have a pump, which... Uh, for me, it's just like I don't like to rely on other people. Um, it's not good form. So having that pump uh, just always on my bike, can never forget it. Um, and also the um, this feels like it's just become a granite design advert, but it's honestly not. Other other people make this stuff too, but uh, granite design is our chosen partner, and we think it's great. <sighs> just digging myself out of a hole there now, haven't I? <laughs> Um, but the um, the granite rock strap for the tube as well, and I also put that's where I put the tire levers with the chain breaker, and um, just on the frame, so you can never forget a tube. So because like I find um, you're always having to like wash your bag or you have to check everything's in there. So just having it on the bike, you never take it off unless you need to replace it or put it on a different bike. But ideally, you have one bike and you just keep it all on that one bike. And then you never forget these tools. And then you're never that guy who didn't bring Allen keys on the ride. So, um, yeah. And then I think this is the last thing. I'll need to check my list. But um, using Kush Chorus this year 
on my bike. Uh, so Kush cores are a tire insert. Um, I actually have the, uh, this is the cross country one, I believe. Let's double check. Yes, this is the cross country one. Um, so this one's a little bit more lightweight um, than the sort of pro uh, level one. Um, but this essentially just goes on your rim and it means when your tire gets, uh, you know, displaced by a rock or a root, it hits this instead of your rim. Um, and this is also like made out of this real sturdy foam so it um, supports the tire, um, which is great. But this is just really, the biggest thing for this, for me, is if I get a flat. I can keep riding. Um, it's obviously well annoying if you were on a big ride and you had to take it out. Um, but for race conditions or short rides near my house, um, or not near my house, but like I know I'm never too far from the car, this thing is an absolute lifesaver. It just gets you down the trail, you don't wreck your rim, and uh, yeah, just it works great. You don't need to worry about it. just one less thing to worry about, basically. That's kind of the, oh, the real benefit of these is you just worry about your wheels less, which is phenomenal. So we'll double check the list again, see what else I've got to talk about. Um, that's kind of it. Those were just kind of the things I wanted to share with you about um, my bike and what I do to just make my life a bit more hassle-free. So yeah, this is clearly me wrapping up the video. Uh, not stringing together much of a sentence that well anymore. But if you like this video, uh, drop us a like uh, or subscribe to the channel. Um, or hit us up in the comments below if you've got any other questions. Otherwise, we shall see you in the next video. So thanks for watching. Bye-bye for now.